Hey everybody, it's Bill from MattTracker.com and welcome to this episode of Behind the Mask. I'm joined by somebody that I've seen post randomly throughout the years and I'm jealous of some of the elements that he has in his collection. And you might recognize that sticker sheet behind him as well because I also have one. But this is uh, Andy Plasser. And Andy, um, before we dive into what we're really going to talk about, I just want to check in, um, see how you're doing and just in general, how you got started with your collection with Mask? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, thanks for the warm welcome, basically. And um, yeah, I'm currently 38 years ago. Um, like most of the guys I know uh, collecting Mask is somewhere around the same age. And um, yeah, obviously I'm currently living in Germany and um, I've been a um, fan of Mask like since my early childhood, basically. Um, ever since I got the, the Condor vehicle as my first vehicle of Mask. And um, I really kickstarted my collection like a couple of years ago, like in 2012, I believe. I sold off lots of Star Wars stuff, like I used to collect vintage Star Wars stuff. And um, I started to pick up um, random sealed mask boxes, like mostly uh, the German boxes, the German box version, basically. As you know, like the ones with the logo where the rocket is missing and everything. Yeah. And, um, yeah, through the Star Wars hobby, I was uh, always intrigued about uh, prototype collecting, uh, and I picked up some stuff here and there from friends in the state, and also got in contact with uh, former employees, and just basically did a head dive into this part of the hobby, and um, I've really been enjoying this part, but because it's all about the networking, and uh, yeah, this is uh, where I currently am, and this is the state of my collection, basically. Um, looking for German production stuff and also looking for lots of prototype design art and also employee memorabilia. Stuff like that. Yeah. So pretty much your collection, you have all the elements of the things that I don't have. So I am incredibly jealous and I, I've seen prototype photos and they're probably your photos that have been circulated around. Um, so I'm curious to know exactly what you have in your collection. But before we really dig into that, the one thing I was never 100% sure of, and maybe you can answer this, with that alternate logo, was it because the, you know, the, the blasting of the rocket was too violent? Is that why they changed it? Or was it something with copyrights? Do you know that for sure? So I do not know 100%, but okay. um, there has been some... European legislation, like in the past, in the late 80s, I believe, um, where they actually had um, something saying about um, violent images on toy packaging, like they didn't want to have this. Like I actually dug out this, um, this law somewhere on the internet, um, have lost track of it since, okay. but um, this is like the closest we get to it most likely. Um, later on, I think this legislation or the law basically changed and that's why other packaging was available later on in Germany. And um, yeah, maybe this is actually reason for it. That's what I figured, uh, something along those lines, but I just never was never able to pin down exactly. So that at least kind of confirms my thought. Um, but again, you know, without full confirmation, it's speculation, but we'll call it, call it plausible on that one. Um, so you start, so you're, you're 38 years old now? Uh, 38, 38. So, so am, uh, am I 38? Yes, I'm 38. <laughs> I had to do the math real, real, real quick because in COVID times, every day kind of blends together and you just kind of forget everything. Um, I've been, I, I, you know, I've been kind of doing what I can um, to add to the collection. It's not, it's not as vast as some of I've seen. I mean, there's, 
like, you know, I, I don't know if you've uh, talked with uh, Kenny Flurry, um, like his collection, like, yeah. So it's, it, it you know, and, and there's a, there's a ton of other collectors out there that have a lot more stuff. And what I'm really interested in is kind of preserving the elements of it, not just like the tangible items, but the history of it and the stories. And you, I, I'm pretty sure you have some pretty cool stories to be able to share, but your prototype collection, how many pieces do you have in that? Would you say with this mask? This is really tough to say since I do not keep track of it in terms of <laughs> numbers actually. Yeah. So um, I can, just give you an example, like I have a couple original molds um, for the hard copy stuff um, of Alex Sector and also for Buddy Hawks. I have uh, lots of carded samples. I do have hard copies, first shots. Um, I have original wax sculpts. I have designs. I have internal documents. Um, so it's it's quite a uh, quite a lot of stuff which I have, but I never actually um, counted those. <laughs> it's hard. It's it's probably it's probably as hard to do that as it is to figure out how many figures are in the playful line um, of the mask collection there. But so original molds, prototypes, etc. What what which piece of your collection would you say is your favorite? I think the favorite piece is I, I don't think there is a distinctive piece actually but i think that i really love two of my prototype runs okay so, which is for alex sector and buddy hawks so basically in the past i stumbled across some of those pieces really cheap on ebay just for an example and then um i just got other pieces from friends and also through ebay other auctions and stuff like that and so these two runs basically grew and um they currently represent most likely some of the most complete prototype runs in my collection at least. And I know that there are a couple other collectors out there who have uh, prototype runs for several other pieces. Um, basically Miles Mayhem or Brad Turner, some, some other characters. And um, I quite enjoy it. Like looking at the uh, several steps of um, yeah, production basically, and also prototypes and pre-production, um, this, I just like it basically. And it's, Exactly what you mentioned earlier, it's um, preserving some of the history. This is also why I do like to collect uh, prototypes and pre-production stuff. And also, I'm uh, from a design background in the past, and so I also enjoy this part of the hobby. So this is uh, quite nice, actually. What's your uh, background in design? Well, what were you designing? So basically, I used to do um, graphic and design. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I visited graphic and design. Um, college back in the day. Then I, um, yeah, did a business degree, um, also business major, and I'm currently working in IT as a product owner. Um, so it's not that affiliated, but um, <laughs> it's so like the design part is still, um, yeah, it's still a, a lot or a big part of my life, basically. That's funny. I, um, I, I went to school for web design essentially and development, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of graphic design elements in there too. And I work in IT as an IT manager now, so I'm not really doing as much of that. So it's kind of funny, like you, you start in that one area and then you, you kind of move around, but um, that is interesting. And maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons why I, I gravitate toward mask because there's so much, there's so much different, so many different elements to it. It's, you know, you can collect the main line, which, you know, I got back here somewhere behind me. You can collect, you know, Halloween costumes that don't fit you. Uh, you can collect bedding and et cetera. And there's all these different elements because it was an entity in the 80s. And they put everything, they put their, their brand on everything. And the, 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 so the part that I really enjoy, though, is doing these like one-on-one -on -one conversations and talking, just talking about like how, how you came about some of your collection and, and, and those elements, like I said, it's like, it's like about preserving everything. And uh, God, my website has been out since 2001, it's 2020. It's a long time. 
And it didn't really ramp up until what I am doing now till you know, a little while ago. But I realized that without Kenner and Hasbro and whoever else not acting on anything, it's up to us, me, you, everybody else out there that's collecting, that's sharing stories to really keep it moving forward. And that's what I want to dive into. I want to dive into how you came about some of your collections and you, you don't, you can go into as much detail as you want. You can go on as little, cause I know some of it, some people might not want to be mentioned or might not want to be affiliated. And I understand that fully. Um, and uh, yeah, I, that, that's what I want to, that's what I really want to dive into is how you came about some of your pieces uh, just because it's, I, I know the stories are going to be interesting. So uh, anything you want to share, please do. <clears throat> so maybe let me start. Um, so I think it was like around 2011, 2012, um, where I realized that um, my love for the mass tow line uh, hasn't died over the years. Um, so I decided to just check eBay and to see what is available there. And I think um, the first few pieces which I picked up were um, Billboard Blast, Collector, and also the Sub Catapult, basically. And these were CO shrink wrap, uh, the German version, basically, um, available quite cheap at the time still. So I did not pay more than maybe 35, 40 bucks for each, which um, yeah. was quite good. And they were factory sealed? Yes, factory sealed. Okay. And um, yeah, basically, um, from that moment on, um, I got caught again in collecting masks because previously I had been collecting um, Star Wars and heavily collecting Star Wars. Um, also, a niche area like Spanish Star Wars production toys, which are quite rare. And I think I sold everything off like in 2012, 2013, 2014. Like everything I used to have for Star Wars, which was also sealed, like factory sealed stuff. And I took some of that money basically to dive deeper into uh, mass toys again. Okay. And so um, coming from Germany, it was for me only natural looking for factory sealed German boxes because this is what I know from the shelves back in the day. When I went shopping, this is what I got for Christmas, for my birthday, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I soon found out that it's not that easy to actually find shrink wrap German boxes. So I think what I did back then, I think I signed up to the Metracker Forum. I signed up to um, a couple other German forums. I contacted members from those forums, which I knew, um, who are also from Germany, also from the United States. And I was also looking like for any trace of German box stuff on the internet. So I basically met some people over the net, um, which still had some stuff which I was missing from my collection. Because I'm somewhat a comfortist, basically. So if I go for a German shrink wrap box collection, then I want to have it all. Just um, it's quite an expensive way, but yeah, I just don't like it. Like from 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 design or from an aesthetical like perspective if you have like different boxes because um, I don't know I just I just like the um, the unified look of the same logo the same red boxes and um, having the German language on it I just enjoy it because it's my childhood basically and so um, yeah this is like how I started and this is where it all started with the networking like contacting people um, trying to get some good deals trying to get some rare stuff and yeah, this is, I think, the natural way a collector most of the times takes. And, of course, you can also like, find other stuff on eBay. So this is what I used to do like throughout the years, uh, picking up stuff from friends, from fellow collectors over eBay, other auctions, and um, also forums, and also now Facebook, which has been um, a very considerable part of the hobby right now. That's good. Yeah, I... I, I agree with your sentiment too on the on the logo. Like if you're looking at like so I don't have a lot of boxes. What I have is back there on the on the wall. And I have some of the you know the 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 German logo ones and you know the American ones and the split seconds, like they're all over the place. And it I I get exactly that. I wish they were all uniformed. But I'm not, 
I don't have the funds to, to, to do that. So, um, I, I, you know, I kind of pick and choose when I can, uh, you know, get something in. Um, and I, I do check different, different eBay sites. So I'll go to eBay, France, eBay, Germany, eBay, Brazil, and et cetera. Like, even if the, even if a seller says doesn't ship to, you know, wherever USA, Germany, et cetera, it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, and that's how I got most of my, uh, my playful figures here. I don't have a ton, but I have more, I think than most. Uh, and basically I would just say, Hey, do you ship the United States? And these, I, I got these years ago. Um, probably, 2013, 14, I think, give or take. And I would just, you just ask, uh, it doesn't hurt to ask. And same thing when you're on the forums and you're on uh, Facebook and wherever else you're looking. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You, you kind of go on this deep dive, you go on this, you know, you're, you turn into a detective essentially. And you're, you know, you're kind of, you're digging around. Um, and it, it, it does, I don't want to say it consumes you, but it, it definitely like you get like this. I'm trying to think of the word you, you get like an enjoyment out of it, essentially where you're finding that one piece. Like if you had 99% of the German line shrink wrapped and you found, you know, if it was, you know, firefly or something like that, you know, whatever it would have been, if you found that one piece at the end, you, it, 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 it's probably like the most, one of the most alleviating feelings you ever had <laughs> um, as a collector. Um, so do you have, you, do you just have the German line? Do you have the American line too, or the North American line? So I actually have um, the German line, like the full production run shrink wrapped, like okay. with the exception of uh, laser command and also with the exception of uh, volcano and also outlaw, because I was only able to find the European outlaw shrink wrapped. Um, okay. Yeah. But um, with those exceptions, like it's complete. And I also have a couple carded figures, um, which are also um, with the German logo. Okay. Besides that, I, I do collect um, some of the American pieces as well. Okay. And since I'm done with the German run, like I'm trying to pick up good deals, like here and there, like never come across anything. So I do have a few uh, American boxes as well. And um, I'm still like, diving into this topic because I know there is like a short production run with uh, different boxes, like with the logo on the back, like the blue and white um, guarantee basically. Yeah. And um, there's also some other um, variations out there, I believe. And um, yeah, I'm still trying to get into this topic basically. Um, but I'm also doing quite good. And as you mentioned, um, got to have the funds basically to to pick up stuff here and there and um since i'm on a budget as well um and i'm just trying to get the good deals so it sounds like i need to sell what's in these three cabinets here uh, uh, <laughs> and then uh and then keep going um my collection like i have other stuff too and i basically what i have behind me these are all the toys i had when i was a kid there's there's some stuff here that's newer um, but it's about, you know, preservation too. And it's about the memories that I had, you know, playing with them and, uh, throwing, throwing them at my brother, uh, you know, fun stuff like that. Um, I haven't seen too many carded figures though with the, with the German logo. Um, that's interesting. I have to, I have to superimpose one up here, uh, when I edit the video here. <laughs> um, cause I, I've seen you know, the European variants. Um, I have one that's incredibly beaten up. Uh, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Said I, I, I just covered it in a, in a recent video. I don't remember how I got it or why I got it. I think I just got it to save it because I didn't want the, I didn't want it to get thrown away. And I think I got it for like three bucks. <laughs> like it, and it's, it's, it's Miles Mayhem and Nash Gorey in there. You're in the, in the variant costumes on the, in the two pack. And I was like three bucks, $10 shipping. Sure. No problem. Um, and that's, that's part of it. Like, you know, I have a, I have a, you know, a animation cell. I got it for a dollar. <laughs> it's like, 
I don't know. I've never gotten anything that cheap before and something that, you know, cool for a dollar. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny in that front. Do you, um, so you have a bunch of prototypes. Do you have Thunderball or Ramp Up? So these were in my possession in the past and they will soon be in my possession again um, because I sold them <laughs> off to a friend and he just uh, sold them back to me. So this will be soon back in my collection again. Okay, man. Sorry, I have to take a moment to be um, jealous. Hold on. <laughs> well, don't worry. I think what I've learned throughout the years is that if you focus just on one line and basically buy quality, like save up some money and then buy quality, it makes it a lot easier basically um, to come up with a good and great collection like, which you might enjoy. And so saving up lots of money, not picking up random stuff like throughout the way, is uh, most likely the way to go. Also, um, in terms of prototypes, you can also have some really, really good deals. So I can give you an example later on, which is uh, just way cool, I guess. Are you going to offer me something? Great. Oh, no. no uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, no, and you're right, though. Like, so part, part of, like, I, I don't have any space anymore to add any of this stuff. This stuff here is, like, just kind of posterity now. Um, I do have the superpowers line and the Marvel um, Secret Wars line here um, that I don't think I'd ever part with because they they meant as much to me as almost as Mass did. Um, but I have them quarantined to uh, no pun intended about anything that's going on, but uh, you know to what they are in their spot. I don't have the the vehicles. I don't have like I have the play sets, but I kept it at that. Um, so what I've been doing is scouring what I can same same philosophy not going like yeah if I could find a prototype of Thunderball or ramp up the last time I saw them the last time I saw Thunderball sell on eBay was about four grand I think um that no I I was under the impression that there were about three or four of each out there in the world is that what you've heard too I think the production numbers um, like are a little bit higher. So if okay. you consider the like early prototypes versus the later production-wise prototypes, and there are a few more out there. Okay. And I know yeah. I know that there are also boxed samples out there. So um, not sure if you've seen these yet, but um, these as far in production as like almost being on the shelves. So this is quite. Nice. I've not seen those. I I've seen, I I have seen. Um, I think it was like a really, really tiny picture. I can't even like blow it up to make it look nice in anything. Uh, it's, it's like, it's like 200 by 200 or whatever. I think it was of ramp up. Um, so it was hard to make out the details. And I know people have recreated the box art to sell. And I actually think I saw it on eBay not too long ago where somebody was selling like a, uh, created box essentially, um, I, but I wasn't hundred percent sure. I couldn't even tell. I, I looked at that picture, and I looked at the box, uh, and I couldn't tell if it were the same or not. But I do have um, some of Lance's uh, artwork from his, you know, his time when he worked on the line. Probably not as much as you have, and not the same material. But I know I do have one of the prototypes of Ramp Up, like the drawing and. Um, I actually have a frame over there because I, you know, along with the the sticker sheet behind you, um, that's kind of like where, like Lance really, really like helped push forward things for me. I think in the atmosphere of wanting to preserve things, um, to hear his stories. And I still go back to the interview I did with him years ago. And I wish I was able to do a video like this with him. Um, you know, unfortunately he's, you know, since passed on, but there's been, there, I go back to it. And I, I, I reread it and I'm still amazed at like some of the things that he said, or, you know, some of the alternate names of things. And, and, and it's just, it's just fascinating um, to say the least. So I know, you do have some Lance Anderson artwork and uh, things of that nature. Um, is there anything you want to you know, talk about or share with that? 
Yes, sure. I can um, share some of the stuff later on. I can um, send you some pictures and I can also show you something. Maybe something I have um, handy here for right now is I can pick it up and maybe hold it into the camera right now. I'm not sure if you're able to see it. Oh my goodness. So basically, no. This is uh, <laughs> like for the box art of Boulder Hill. This yeah. is um, basically a paste up. This is what you call it, uh, I think. So those would be so, the side panels, right? Like the little little pictures in it, right? Yes. And it's basically all hand-drawn images and pasted onto transparency, transparency paper. And the logos and everything um, also, um, yeah, beat those preliminary designs. Basically, you can see the old logo on there with yeah. just the dot between um, the letters. Like, um, this is... One piece, which I also got like from Lance, and um, I'm really happy about this piece as it also fits in into the runs of uh, uh, Buddy Hawks and Alex Sector, of which I do have pieces from other uh, former employees from Kenner, basically. And you just mentioned, I think, um, I think Lance preserved lots of his work. Like he really he did. enjoyed his work and he really loved his work. He, he did. And, he used to work at Credit Credit Associates, I believe, and they got this um, this contract with Kenner passed um, back in the day because internally all the designers could not take up all the work, which was um, very, very short term. Like if you look at the dates when they came up with the idea and um, when they started working on that line, um, it was pretty, pretty short term. And so they had to outsource some work basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they. I'm glad they didn't go with Mask Force. Um, I those designs were a little weird, <laughs> um, but and for anybody not knowing what that is, uh, it was some of the early concepts. And there are, um, if you go to the website, and I'm, uh, I'm sure you have some of the pictures that I don't have in your collection there. Um, but if you go to the website, there's 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 drawings of mask force which is what they were essentially going with and um there's kind of a progression of it and you kind of see it it looked like like a buck rogers thing almost uh it was it was a little weird looking um and then you kind of see the concepts of the mask logo coming about where you have the hand drawings and um and uh what was it battle cat or not battle cat there was what was the one there was there was there was one that Lance I know shared around it was a concept of one of the vehicles was it battle cat I can't remember sure but it wasn't I mean I'm not thinking like I'm not thinking that battle cat it I think it was like another alternate name for firecracker if I remember correctly I'll have to look it up um because a lot of times I get you know, as I said in the beginning, before we started recording, I, I get names mixed up all the time. <laughs> so it's not just people's names, it's names of other things too. It's my only flaw. <laughs> I'm not too modest either, but um, no, I, I just, I know there was a, like an alternate name kind of going around there. And you probably have some of those too in your collection. Like you could probably see some of the alternate names from the drawings um, of some of the vehicles. So uh, do you have any of those offhand? Do you know offhand? Like, I know there are some big ones out there. Like, I know Thunderhawk was initially Thunderhawk. Um, I just can't remember. So I do have a binder with lots of information here. And I think, like, from past in the day from Credit Associates, there is a name sign-off sheet. I believe, and so we have some some information here. Um, let me check. So for Thunderhawk, basically we have vehicle names which were called the Chameleon as well. This is quite nice. Um, Chameleon. <laughs> we have a pickup truck here, which was called the Armadillo. Then we also have. Let me see. Um, Battle. And we have also some weird character names like Jack. 
we do have not Cliff Dagger, we have Cliff Archer, we have Austin Ames or Russell Russell Max for him. And we have you see, Miles Mayhem was always my Miles Mayhem. Um, we have Sylvester, Sly Wheeler, or Clay Stalker, or Randall Payne, basically, for Sly Rex. Something like that. It's uh, quite interesting, like the information we have there. So Firecracker, and, Battle Dog, that was the name I was trying to think of. Um, and then you have Rhino with Trojan Horse, Command Cruiser. <laughs> uh, you know, there's... It's... It's interesting. The that that's it. Yep, that's the one I was thinking of. I couldn't I couldn't think of the, I couldn't think of the name, and um, it was an alternate name for for Firecracker. So I was I was close. Dog, uh, battle, you know, battle dog, battle cat. It was almost there. Um, it's just one one species different on, on that front. Um, yeah, I I um. Like I said, I, I wish I was able to talk with Lance, and I know he also talked a lot with um, uh, what was the name of that other massive website? I'm Gordon. To... Yes, Gordon. Gordon. Yes, Gordon. Yes, I, I I haven't talked to Gordon in a while. Um, ever since kind of he, he shut down his website, I, I've chatted with him off and on, um, and I know he talked a lot with Gordon, and there was a lot of a lot of things shared there as well. And I'm glad that I'm glad that. Lance was able to share his work because um, like you said he, he kept a lot and I I do have like a binder not 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 as, probably as nice as yours <laughs> um, but just of some of the some of the drawings um, not original ones they're um, they're photocopied um, but just to have them for posterity um, is pretty neat and when so Lance sent me this sticker sheet and this, like I said, this kind of, kind of spearheaded me wanting to preserve more. Um, after we did the interview, he asked for my address. He's like, I got a couple of things I want to send you. And I, I got the package. So I'm like, what, what, what is all this stuff? What <laughs> I felt like, I, I felt like I was like uncovered, like a lost treasure. Um, and he, he signed it. Um, you know, he's like, this is what I would use when I would be putting together the packages. Like, you crack it off and, you know, do whatever. And I was just like, man, I wish I had something cool like that to be able to share. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it, it, the, so the stories are really interesting. And I, um, I, man, I can't believe you're going to have Thunderball and ramp up. Like, uh, man, well, you have to promise me something, and you don't have to promise me anything, actually. Can I can I get a picture of it? Can I see it? Close up. Yeah, sure. Like yeah. once once it's in my possession, I can. Yes, give I, you... I've seen pictures of it, and I just I'm just curious because as you said, and it made sense. There's there's pre you know pre prototype production stuff, and it, it kind of goes out that way. So it's good to know that there's more than just three or four of each. Um, so I'll keep my eyes out and open. Um, do you, um, have you seen any of the, the 3d printing that's going on? Um, are you a fan of any of that? So basically I don't care. Like as long as I'm not fooled for like, um, 3d printed stuff, yes. it's yeah. totally fine. Um, I wish that some guys who do these 3d, 3d prints, um, would put a mark on there that it's reproduction or something because some novice collectors might be fooled, like especially for small pieces and parts whatsoever. I've seen that uh, actually masks are being faked now and also um, some of the smaller guns, like for Jackhammer, for an example, whatsoever. Like each his own, like if, if they want to purchase reproduction, that's totally fine. Like if they have kids and the kids want to play with it and they're afraid that it gets broken, also fine. But to me, um, if I cannot afford like the real production part, then I just save up to buy the real production part instead of a cheaper production. Because um, I think this brings down the value and it's, it's not the same as like the real early stuff. No, and you're correct on that front. I, and I agree with like people not selling it to say that it's like, I, I have the ramp up and the Thunderball 
from Shapeways here behind me. And I have um, custom figures of uh, Hondo and Cliff Dagger from those sets. And I know what they are. Like, they're, they're customs. But you, as you said, though, some of the masks are being redone. So I hope that, I hope that people don't fall for that, as you said, where let's say that you have um, uh, the, the collider masks, the, the, black, the, the black and gold ones with the dots on them or something like that. If, if you're able to replicate those and, and you're, you, you obtain it and then you resell it, like let's say that the person making them isn't the one that's going to like say it's real they're selling it as what it is you then if you know say you know not saying you would but you buy it and then you you put it on ebay as legitimate um but we all know that the problem you know if you unless i mean those masks i don't know how many i don't know if you have any in your collection but they're incredibly brittle uh, every one that i've seen and i actually broke one i was devastated um i was I was moving the collection around. I was doing, I was doing, I was actually doing some dusting. And it's one of the reasons why I don't really do it anymore. <laughs> it's I, um, I was moving it and it literally just kind of, the figure just went, boop, just kind of fell over and the mask shattered. I looked down at it. I went, <laughs> there was no putting it back together. I still have the pieces, but it, you know, <laughs> what the hell am I going to do with it? It's, um, so now I have, my one remaining one sitting in Stinger back there because uh, I don't want it on a figure shelf just in case it falls because uh, sometimes that does happen. Um, but no, I, I've seen, I've seen, and this was before three D printing became really popular. You would see, um, let's pull it down here. You would see like this figure get, you know, painted and then sold off. Um, because it was so hard to find the same thing with the ace Riker with the black jacket and the white pants, you would see all that happening where people would just paint them to mimic it and then sell it, not as an F front, but there's some stuff that's pretty cool. You have some things that are like one, you know, unique, um, you know, the quencher, the, you know, the little, the, um, yeah. you know, the, 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 the soda machine. And then you have some people out there that are doing, so I don't, I don't know if you pay attention to the, to the, to the Facebook page or anything like that. But um, one of the customizers, Wes, who sent me those mass computers where you can put the phone behind it and everything. He sent, he sent me a transport plane. It's like the size of me. Um, and I, and one of my biggest, one of my biggest problems with masks was that Rhino didn't fit inside, you know, through Boulder Hill. So, when he made this damn thing, it's like it, he made sure it would fit. And I think I could live in it. Um, so I'm trying to think of where I would actually put it behind me somewhere. Um, I think he's getting near completing it. But there's some things like when you do stuff like that, I love that. But when you're, yeah. when you're doing the things of trying to trick people, no, not so much. But you're right, though, about going around, you know, and it goes back to what you said earlier. You sell it off other elements and you're not just buying this and that you're waiting and putting it aside on that front. Um, so it's a, it's a good lesson to learn if your goal is to, you know, get the complete box set of something or to, to find, you know, a prototype or to find a ramp up or a thunderball or, you know, et cetera. Like, if you're, if you're waiting on that, or, you know, if you want to pay your mortgage, uh, for, for a month or two, <laughs> um, you know, it, there, there's those elements where if you just have patience with it, it'll pay off in the end. Um, so I, I'm actually, I'm happy that you'll, I'm happy that you're going to have them in your collection because it's, that's important. It's important. And I'm sure your friend also, was a big mass collector as well. Um, but it's important to, to, that they stay within the collector, you know, the collector's, you know, realm, not to go to, you know, somebody who's going to just kind of flip it for another 
a couple thousand dollars on top of it or something like that. Um, and it goes back to the preservation portion of it um, on that front. Is there, um, so out of what you have currently, is there anything, is there, what's the one piece that you've been trying to get? Like what's, what, do, what would you say your Holy Grail piece is and do you have it yet? So my Holy Grail piece currently, I'd say is uh, original art. So okay. I mean, it's not a photocopy. It's uh, not just a scan or whatsoever. It's a original box art. Um, I do have a few pieces in my collection as well. And I do have the original box art for um, The Collector, which, um, as I mentioned, fits again quite nicely into the run of Alex Sacker and Buddy Hawks again. Um, so I, I kind of keep stumbling upon <laughs> prototype pieces for those two characters. And so I really enjoyed this. That's funny. Um, um, that you kind of keep, you kind of keep staying around those guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, it works out though in the end because you can, you build around it. That's pretty cool. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I have a Holy Grail piece. I mean, if I could find any type of prototype piece for Matt Tracker or a Thunderhawk or, you know, something along those lines, that would be right up there. But, you know, it's, it's not to me it's not about the one piece it kind of just it just happens for me and tomorrow it might be a playful figure uh, the next day it might be um, me trying to find a stiletto box or one that's not yellow uh, you know it's it, it just kind of goes along those lines um, I think it, but if I could if there's anything Thunderhawk related or Matt Tracker related, which I would imagine would be harder to find considering that would be something that people would really hold on to. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's the way I would go with that one, I think. I think that's fair to say. I do actually also have uh, just one piece related to Thunderhawk in my collection, which is the uh, first chop. And this is quite an interesting story, I believe, because it was um, early on in 2012, I believe. I was uh, just looking on ebay.com um, and was uh, looking through the mass toy section. I found one figure, um, but I have it right here, um, which was described as a figure with heavy playware. So I'm going to hold it in the camera. So this is basically what it looked like. <laughs> and I think no one um, wanted to have this piece. And I think I... I was like scrolling by this figure and then I realized what I had just seen. And so I went back and I purchased it. And it was, I think I, I paid 99 cents for this piece. And it's actually a hand painted uh, proto mold of um, Alex Sector. And you can see like how the paint is coming off, like how um, the actual plastic of the hat has a different color. Yeah. And it does not have pack holes, for an example. Wow. And this thing was just 99 cents. And the funny thing was, I was looking through the other items which the seller had, and he did have a ton of vehicle prototypes as well. So I think back then I bought a um, bulldoze. I had a Thunderhawk. He had a second Thunderhawk, which I unfortunately lost out on. Um, he had Goliath, he had Goliath 2, he had um, a Condor, a Stinger, and some other pieces as well. And no one paid attention to these. There was like a fully unpainted Stinger, like with uh, non-production color treads, and a fully unpainted Condor, which I can show you pictures of later on. Um, and I think I got all those pieces like for a really, really, really low amount of uh, dollars. And I was, as you can imagine, like I was, sometimes other people like look for completed listings and I was afraid that someone would look at completed listings, find those things and would act on me on the deal. So I was sitting at home waiting for like three or four weeks for that stuff to arrive. And I was so happy when I was able to unpack it and really confirm that all that stuff were prototypes. This is, this can also, this can happen, you know, like you can still make good deals, prototype deals on eBay. And um, I just, thought this is, uh, was way cool. And all this stuff um, came from Columbus, Ohio. 
and it was auctioned off through a local auction house. And um, they also, they didn't know like what they have basically. And um, they just kept adding more stuff. And all this stuff came from um, yeah, the testing lab of Kenner, like from a former employee from the estate of a former employee. And he basically kept all that stuff in the basement. And I think later on the same auction house um, also auctioned off some Star Wars toys, like also prototypes and pre-production. Um, which created some big fuss because it was um, some some way cool pieces out there. And I was lucky enough that I was early in the game to pick up all the mess stuff before, um, yeah, basically the stuff hit the collecting scene. And um, yeah, I guess I got lucky. So this is like the biggest part of my prototype collection. And then I started picking up other stuff. So what I'm quite happy and thankful about. I, uh, I, and this, this, this is like, this is why I like doing these conversations because to, to hear that story, if, all right, so if I, if I was able to come across any of that one piece, I'd be like, wow, that's amazing. And that, that's really cool that you're able to accumulate all that on that front. I don't have a, I don't have a really cool story like that, but I do have, I do have one pretty weird figure, one of the one of the playful figures that I found on the United States site for some reason. And it's got like 10 different colors to it. And I definitely know it's playful because it's got the metal, the metal legs to it. And it, it's got, it's like a Frankenstein of it. And it's not, I see no indication that it was broke open. Um, and as you know, I mean, they're, are really poorly designed just because they were sec you know kind of secondary on it um i got this for like three bucks four bucks and i've never seen anything like it to this day i don't know what it is um but that's the thing though like you you, you go searching like you, when you found that alex i was just scrolling like if you're a regular collector why the hell would you want this <laughs> like if you're just kind of scrolling through it i saw that i was like yeah, I'm going to get that. It looks like a demon, but why not? Um, and it's one of the more unique pieces that I have, just, you know, being a figure itself. Um, I um, try to think. think. So have, so you, you've talked of, you've talked to past Kenner employees or at least, you know, had, you know, dealings open, things like that. Were, were there, were there a lot of older pieces still around, like, you know, the boxes or, you know, things like that? Or was it, was it kind of like one person had like maybe this or, you know, one thing and, you know, vice versa. Do you remember any of that? Yes. So basically, as I mentioned before, um, I'm originally coming from the, the Star Wars hobby, basically yeah. collecting vintage Kenner and Star Wars toys. And um, I think in this scene, um, all the Kenner sources have been raided in the past, basically, because early on, someone um, started to dig through um, yeah, all production stuff and also found some pre-production stuff and um, they bought it like from former employees and sold it on on the secondary market. And um, it added huge or yeah, huge prices basically. And um, at that point in time, like in the 90s, I think the 90s were the days um, like when, when Kenner closed down when they moved to Rhode Island basically. And um, when the Kenner um, morgue, as it called, it's mm -hmm. called um, shut down basically they mm -hmm. threw out a ton of stuff and i think from that time like some star wars collectors picked up um pre-production stuff like right out of the dumpster basically and they brought it home and it was not only star wars it was like several other canon toy lines as well and so lots of prototype stuff is circulating in collections right now but there are still some of these um which kept all their work specimens basically and they have not been selling these as of late so some of the stuff is hitting the market now because there was not that huge of a demand for mass toys it was usually always star wars and um 
if someone contacted a former Kenner of me, they most of the times um, bug them about Star Wars toys. Mm. And okay. if you're like out and contacting Kenner yeah. employees right now, former Kenner employees, um, and you talk to them about masks, they're sometimes surprised like to actually be talking about a different toy line. So they enjoy it because uh, they've been contacted hundred or sometimes a thousand times about Star Wars, but sometimes like they have not even been once contacted about masks, which is quite uh, surprising. I've, um, I've been trying to locate people that worked with Kenner um, to talk mask just because I'm sure they have cool stories too. And you know, whether or not they remember fully, I mean, it was 35 years ago or whatever it is. Um, you know, maybe one day you can help me out with that. It's up to you though. Um, you know, it, it, it I, I would love to be able to pick their brains on, you know, what a work day was like, like, it, like little things like that. I mean, not even asking them like, Hey, tell me something. I just want to know their stories. Um, but you know, that's another day I think, but you know, it's, it, it's a shame that it kind of transpired that way. But um, I'm also glad that, you know, those, these elements are at least in collector's hands um, on that front. I um, so I had a question. I forget what it was. Oh, um, have you have you um, read any of the uh, the Mask eighty five or Mask eighty six series that uh, Kerouac put out? I did actually um, read the first one, I believe, but did not get around to like to read the eighty six version. Yeah, this one uh, I found it on the Facebook page basically, and I thought it was quite nice, like a uh, good sequel, actually, um, and um, nice storytelling, nice drawings, of course. Yeah, I um, I was surprised when it first started, like, transpiring the way it did. Uh, I, I talked to him a lot, uh, just because we talk, we talk about baseball all the time, and um, it, I was really, really happy with um, the way it kind of carried um it wasn't the idw line which people hate because it was new um i didn't hate it i didn't love it but you know it was kind of lukewarm uh, but with what he did taking the elements put his own stories together and using the old designs um maybe with like little changes here and there but you know he's he's writing it he's drawing it he's putting the story together so you know, do whatever do whatever he wants him and you know, on that front, but, um, yeah, I was, I was really pleasantly surprised and it was nice to have new mass content. Uh, the one thing I said, I wished I could do is I wish I, I wish I was an animator or, um, something along those lines where we can kind of like make those cartoon episodes or, uh, you know, something where we could get some voice actors to do something with it and just try to generate something. Um, because you have the mask movie, probably, maybe happening. I, it's it's hard to say. It, it's a question that I get asked a lot, and I I, I tell people that I kind of know the same news that everybody else does. Um, I have I have reached out to um, the production studios just to ask, but I haven't gotten a response, which what I would assume would be the case. Uh, just to say, like, hey. You guys, you guys still working on it? Um, do you need any guidance? I, there's a lot of people in the community that can help. You know, I'm not saying you're not going to do a good job with it, but if you need reference points or something along those lines, like we're all here, we're all just hanging out waiting. Uh, you know, um, you know, we want to we want to see something new. Um, and if there was something new, um, one question you might be able to answer if if there was going to be a classic line, are there molds still left that would be able to utilize that would they have to like recreate everything? So I cannot say for hundred percent that I'm sure, but um, most of the stuff I believe like the actual steel molds from several different vendors in uh, China have been disposed in the Hong Kong Harbor basically. So if you are good in diving, like then you might find some stuff there. But most of it has destroyed, uh, has been destroyed. Oh, so what was actually saved is um, some of the actual silicone molds, like 
Um, in terms of toy production, basically you start off with a rough clay skull of a figure. Um, the next step would be that you get some wax and do some nice um, wax sculpts of the actual character. And then of this wax sculpt, basically, you would take a silicone mold. Mm -hmm. And some of those actually survived. And one of um, Kenner's former sculptors just recently sold off a ton of these things, um, which he carried out of uh, Kenner in the 90s, basically. So he just took them home. And um, so some of that stuff is actually still existing, but um, I doubt that the steam walls are still around. Like, you can, if you're happy, find maybe just a piece or two which someone took home. I actually saw some of our Star Wars and some other lines, but I actually did not see any for Mask yet. Okay. And that's what I assumed. It should be just because I've never really seen anything come of it or ever really heard any tales of it. Every, every so often you'll hear a story in passing. Um, but and that's, that's one thing that would worry me is that they wouldn't really have, they wouldn't be able to do a classic line like you have, um, you know, the Masters line or uh, the one, the Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters just came out with the Kenner logo on it nonetheless. Um, you know, it, it's, it's something that I think a lot of people wish for to have a re-release. I, I do and don't want it. Um, I, I think I would rather have, if they were going to take the, if they were going to go with a movie premise and change things around, I'd rather just have a new line. Um, I think then kind of saturating the market with, you know, re uh, re-releases essentially, you know, 35 years later, I know a lot of people would want it. And if it was out, I would buy it. Like I'm not, I'm not saying I wouldn't buy it. I would. I just think like it then there would be something else that I would have to then get. Um, and it goes back to funds. <laughs> That's <laughs> on that front. Um, but it's, it would be interesting. Do you, do you want a movie to happen? So actually I, I would um, really enjoy to see the classic line get, getting a re-release. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I think this would first of um, be a way um, not to have that many reproductions of masks and other pieces around because people could afford um, to have this toy like made actually from Hasbro most likely. Yeah. And um, secondly, it's, it's a cool thing just um, to, to have the same feeling as in the past, right? Because production numbers would be much higher than in the past and people could actually unpack some of those things and display them and just uh, store all the old production stuff, um, <clears throat> cabinets or whatsoever. Um, so they could archive it. They could just play one set of the uh, new stuff and they could uh, just put the other stuff away to save it. It would be uh, at least a good chance. Of That's a good point. I think of it that way either. Um, yeah, I, the, the movie I think will happen at some point. I just don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Um, I know they have a writer so, and, and, and a director, but I don't know what the, you know, with, with everything that's happening, like you could obviously write from home during COVID times. Um, but I don't know, I haven't heard anything. And, um, unfortunately when, when there's no news, it's, what's well, not always bad news. It just means there's nothing to report on. Um, well, I don't want to, I, I think you and I could probably talk for 10 hours, um, straight, but, before I close out this first meeting together, I wanted to know if there was anything else that you wanted to chat about. So actually, um, we did talk about this entire um, education and documentation part. So what I'm actually trying to achieve right now or what I'm doing in my pastime, like um, if I get off work, um, I just start up my computer and I'm currently writing and compiling a visual dictionary and comprehensive guide about masks, which will cover lots of information about the toy line, about the designers, um, about Kenner. Um, I have prototype call sheets, um, several signed samples, and I want to cover the entire production run. So not only just uh, the German trick wrap boxes, also loose production pieces, and also the American series and um, the European carded versions whatsoever. So because I think, um, if you want to keep this franchise basically alive, um, you have to give some 
um, yeah, substantial information like to to following generations like about this toy line. Correct. So I think it's it's important that they know about like how this was produced, what was used, like who worked on it, and what is available because there are some some guides out there available, but I, I doubt that these cover the entire series like what was available in terms of the toy line. So I'm not talking about all this other stuff like thermos or whatsoever. I'm just talking about the toy line. Mm -hmm. And I think um, there's nothing out there yet. And I thought that when I started back then in the day, like to collect masks, I would have wished to have some guide which puts me in the right direction. So all the information um, I required firsthand basically about prototypes, like talking to employees and whatsoever. And I just want to pass on this information so that um, novice collectors will have the same level of knowledge and that they yeah. will not be fooled about replicas and that they know like what is a genuine production sample, what is a prototype, and which boxes are available and whatsoever. So this is just something that, um, yeah, I'm doing. Yeah. That's and that, that's ambitious. I So as you said, there's not really anything out there. I've... I've thought about the idea, but I don't have, I don't have all of that knowledge. Um, and as you said, like, you know, it, leaving out the cartoon, leaving out other elements and just focusing on the toy line, there's a, there's so much you have to cover. Um, and it, it, it would take a monumental effort. Um, but it sounds like you're geared correctly for it um, on that front. I, there is there is one thing I, I've been I've been thinking about doing um, is doing like a documentary on mask, and that's why I kind of want to collect memories too. Like I just want to I want to put something together that goes over what we have, uh, and not even like you have you have some documentary series out there that have mentioned mask, um, none that are really covering it though. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's not GI Joe, it's not masters, it's not transformers, but it's, it's mask. And it often, when you bring it up and, you know, people might not remember it you bring it up to somebody in just random passing or something like that. Or if I, if I walk around with a shirt on, um, out in public, I, people go, Oh man, I remember that with, um, the car that flew and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Or like, it might be more, it might be more elaborate. Like, oh, mad tracker. Yeah. I'm, you know, and things like that. And to have that, well, I don't have that conversation now because I don't go outside, but before, <laughs> um, before that, it was really cool to like just converse with random people and you would have that happen. Um, whenever I go to like a, a convention or something, I wear something like this or something with the, the website logo on it. And, um, it's always nice to be able to chat with with the fans on that front. Um, I wish I I wish I had more to offer on that front. Uh, but if there's anything I can help you with on that, um, if there's anything you're looking for in particular, uh, I offer my services in full. I don't know what I can offer you, but um, that is there anything you need? Just you know, you know, how to, you know, how to reach me. So appreciate it. Because I think um, that's also what uh, the hobby is about. Like lots of. Um, Fellow collectors became friends over the years, and um, they are also sharing some of their items from their collection. And so, of course, like if you are not a millionaire, you most likely won't have all the production toys. So, I know some people try, but so much out there. Like, also, if you look, oh no, Candy, you froze. It's just the, oh, uh, the playful figure. So. My back? Yeah, you, fro you froze up there. Your eyes were shut. You were just like this. I was like, oh, no, you want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you're right, though. Um, and I'm hoping to talk with the owner of Playful the, about the line. I haven't, like, I've talked to him, but I haven't been able to talk to him like this. Um, because I want to know how many figures there are. <laughs> like, I, I want to know, I know there's, there's probably at least, 150 and that's me being nice like on the low side there and some of them are really well done but some of them you know it just from 
I, I guess the plastic that was used or something along those lines, if you take the helmets off or the masks off, they just break. And, um, but I, I just, I would love to know the story behind that too, because they're, they're, you know, people call them bootlegs and I don't, I don't really consider them bootlegs. I don't know. Bootleg. It's officially yeah. licensed. So. Yeah. And that's what it is. So like I have, I mean, I have this, you know, that I don't know if you saw this thing, but the, the misc set, it's got the, yeah, that's a bootleg. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, um, it's got weird character driven, you know, elements of it. And it's spelled M E S K. I, I don't know. Uh, that's, you know, and that's what it is. It's actually licensed and people call them bootlegs and they're not really, they're not really bootlegs. They're from playful. So it's like, you kind of have to go that front on it, but um, I, I appreciate the time, Andy. Um, I know uh, there's a little bit of a time difference and I, I, I would love to chat again one day. Um, and like I said, if you say anything you need help with, uh, if there's anything I can help you with at all, I, I'd be glad to help with, um, you know, anything you're looking for in general, I'll keep my eyes open for you. Um, and just uh, like you said, kind of, kind of helping each other out. So um I'm, I'm looking forward to that, by the way. Um, hopefully it's shared with everybody when you're done. <laughs> um, so um, for Bill, that's Andy. Uh, until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe to help keep Mask alive. And we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Andy.